Hey everyone! Since starting this channel, I realized that I've only made like one video talking about the science that I'm actually interested in, and the rest of my videos have been about either coding and astronomy research, or about the PhD program here at NMSU. And while I think those are important topics to discuss, this is supposed to be an astronomy YouTube channel, so I thought it would be a good idea to start making more videos that give a more zoomed out view of the various aspects of astronomy that my research focuses on. In the most general sense, I study the evolution of galaxies. But what does this mean exactly? Well, obviously evolution describes how things change with time. But in astronomy, these changes are happening over extremely long timescales that make the human lifetime seem almost insignificant. So just to put this into numbers for you, for example, a star's lifetime can be anywhere from billions of years to many billions of years, while a human lifetime is only on average roughly 80 years. For most objects studied in astronomy, we can't just point our telescope at the same object for the whole 80 years or so of a human lifetime and expect to see many changes, because as I mentioned, the timescales over which the universe evolves are very large, and so a mere 80 years won't produce much change. To get an idea of how we study the evolution of astronomical objects, we can think about how we would study the evolution of humans. So if you were interested in how certain characteristics of humans change as they age, you might compare samples of people in different age groups. So for example, you could look at how hair pigment changes as people age by looking at a group of 10 to 20 year olds and comparing them to a group of 70 to 80 year olds. If you do this, you might find that the people in the 10 to 20 year old age group tend to have more pigment in their hair than the people in the 70 to 80 year old age group. We can do the same thing with how people dress and how that changes with age or how people's height changes with age. So then in terms of astronomy, how would we study the evolution of astronomical objects? Well, like I mentioned, what you wouldn't do is stare at a local star or galaxy and wait for it to change. Instead, you would look at the characteristic of character <laughs> Instead, you would look at the characteristics of objects at different times in the history of the universe. So, for example, if you were interested in galaxy evolution, you would look at the characteristics of galaxies when the universe was 3 billion years old, 5 billion years old, 10 billion years old, and so on, and see how those characteristics are changing with time. One minor issue with this simplified method of studying galaxy evolution that I've just described is that obviously we can't time travel to when the universe was only 3 billion years old, because time machines and time travel have not been invented yet. So in order to look at galaxies at different ages of the universe, we need to look at galaxies at further and further distances from us. The reason this idea of looking at further distances translates to looking at earlier times is because the speed of light is constant, and so when a galaxy emits light, it doesn't arrive at our telescopes instantly, but rather takes time to travel through the vast distances of the universe before it reaches us. So the light we receive from a galaxy tells us what that galaxy was doing at the time the light was emitted, not at the time that we received it. So light that's traveled a further distance to reach our telescopes is carrying information from an earlier time in the history of the universe. So in order for astronomers to study the evolution of galaxies, they would identify samples of galaxies at various distances from us, quantify the properties of those galaxies using some set method, and then compare those properties across the samples. So for example, if you were looking at galaxies at various distances from us, which corresponds to various times in the past, and you were interested in how their star formation rates are evolving, you would use a well-calibrated method to quantify the star formation rates of those samples at the various distances using the light that you receive from those samples. Then you would plot those star formation rates as a function of distance for those various samples, and what you're essentially doing when you make this plot is you're, make, you're plotting the star formation rate as a function of age of the universe, or as a function of time. In doing this, you would see that as you looked at samples of galaxies at further and further distances from us, or at earlier and earlier times in the past, you would see the star formation rate initially increase with distance from us until a certain distance whose light was emitted towards us when the universe was roughly two and a half billion years old, at which point the star formation rates would turn over and begin decreasing again as you go towards earlier and earlier times in the universe. This peak in star formation rate when the universe was roughly two to three billion years old is referred to as cosmic noon, and it's thought that this is a point in the history of the universe when galaxies were most active in terms of their star formation. You can look at similar evolutionary trends in the case of stellar masses of galaxies or metallicity of galaxies, or in the case of my research, the gas content of galaxies and their environments. The main point is that observationally studying galaxy evolution relies on being able to identify these samples of galaxies out to further and further distances in order to be able to peer back into earlier and earlier times in the history of the universe. I should mention two major cosmological effects that can sometimes interfere with our ability to identify these galaxy samples out to further and further distances. The first effect is known as cosmological surface brightness dimming, and this effect makes it so that galaxies appear fainter than expected given a 1 over r squared relationship between their intrinsic luminosity and their apparent brightness. 
and the amount of dimming that occurs is dependent on the age of the universe. This means that galaxies that are further away from us, or that are emitting light from an earlier time, are going to suffer more surface brightness dimming than the galaxies that are close by to us. So obviously studying galaxy evolution out to earlier and earlier times requires amazingly powerful telescopes that are sensitive enough to detect these faint early universe galaxies. The other effect is due to the cosmological expansion of our universe. So because our universe is uniformly expanding, objects that are further away from us are moving away from us faster than the objects that are more close by. This is just a property of uniform expansion. This movement away from us causes the light from these objects to be redshifted, and this redshift effect is stronger for objects that are further away because, as I mentioned, they are moving away faster. This redshift means that the light from these distant objects is being stretched in wavelength and that the photons are losing energy, and this is causing them to appear on the lower energy or longer wavelength end of the electromagnetic spectrum. The reason this can be an issue for studying the properties of galaxies at further and further distances is because many of the methods that we use to quantify the properties of the more local galaxy population are calibrated using optical to infrared wavelength photons that are emitted from the galaxy. But for the more distant galaxies, these optical to infrared uh, photons are being shifted further and further away from our observable window. And this makes it really hard to consistently quantify the properties of galaxies at various distances using the same set method. So, in order for us to study the properties of objects that are further and further away from us, we need instrumentation that is more sensitive to those low-energy photons that we expect to receive from the early universe. The James Webb Space Telescope, or JWST, is a great example of a telescope that can help us here, because JWST was specifically built with the sensitivity needed to detect those faint early universe galaxies, the optics needed to resolve early universe features, and its instrumentation was designed to be sensitive to those lower energy photons that we expect to receive from the early universe. I'm not going to say anything else about JWST here in this video, but I'll leave a few links in the video description in case you're interested in learning more about the telescope or any of its capabilities. So this was just a quick introduction into galaxy evolution and how it's studied in a very general sense. In my next video, I'd like to go into more details about the aspects of galaxy evolution that my research focuses on specifically. I hinted at this a little bit earlier when I mentioned the gas content of galaxies and their environments, but again, I'll get more into that in a later video. Um, hopefully this little intro was interesting to you all. Let me know what you thought in the comments and if you have any questions or if there's anything that I discussed today that you'd like to hear more about. And uh, thank you all for watching.